Someone that shout amen. Your case has been settled. Today, there is a revelation. I said there is a revelation. In Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. In Mount Zion, there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Everybody hearing my voice, if your amen is loud, I deliver you from their hands. Bishop Dr. Emma Gospel Issa, your host 
in our regular monthly morning dew program, International Interdenominational Program. In this special morning dew of 2nd of May 2020, I'm here to bring to you very lively, powerful word of God as usual. Even though we are far away in our homes and our offices, wherever you are watching this, on the Facebook, on YouTube, on whatever channel, God is about to pass through this world to touch your life and family. Get your family together and friends, wherever you are watching us online, something is about to happen as I'm bringing to you one of the most powerful words you've ever heard. It will change your life and destiny. Don't go away. And you're going to come right inside and meet me there as I share the word with you. God bless you. Righteous God, Jehovah seeking beside you. There is no Saturday, first Saturday of May, 2nd of May, 2020. Very peculiar to us. One of, the, one of the days we have to do morning dew online. I'm so grateful to God that some of you found time to queue in and to log in to be with us on this special morning dew day. If you have never attended morning dew before, I want you to know that it's quite exciting and beautiful every first Saturday of the month. My name is Bishop Dr. Emma Gospel Isa. I want to share with you a message that will change your entire life, a message that will affect and impact you, especially this period of lockdown and this moment that our generation is going through so much. And that message, I title it, Change the Name of Your Situation. Change the name of your problem. Change the name of your sickness. I'm taking it from the book of Genesis 35, verse 18. Genesis chapter 35, verse 18. Change the name of your problem. And I'm going to read with you. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, talking about Rachel, that she died. And she called the name of that baby Benoni, 
But his father said, no, his name shall be Benjamin. Benoni, sorrow, shame. Benjamin, right hand, might. What was the key difference between the pronouncement of Rachel and the pronouncement of Jacob? Both of them were facing the same situation. Their child was dead. They have been through a very tumultuous and tedious journey. If you read from chapter 28 even to chapter 29, get to 30, 31, to 32, now you are in 35. You see the challenges of this wonderful couple. From the time they even intended to marry, delay in marriage, uh, you see delay in childbirth, and uh, you see uh, the kind of shameful situation, painful situation they went through. But what I'm going to teach you today is not to call your situation by the way it presents itself, not to give it the name that your enemy gives, not to allow you use your mouth and give yourself a, a death sentence. I'm going to teach you today how to use your tongue in reverse the tongues of your enemy, because many tongues, thousands of tongues are working against you, waxing against you. People are speaking against you. Incantation is a speaking. Libation is a speaking. Prayer is a speaking. Blessings are speakings. Curses are speakings. And he who speaks last is who, he who would win the battle, the last speaker. And the most powerful speaker, the one that speaks in the name of the Lord. Some of us, people have spoken evil against us, and we have repeated what they have spoken. We have recapitulated it. We have confirmed it. We have said amen to our enemies. But thank God for the life of Jacob. Jacob was a man of faith. Don't forget Jacob was a grandson of Abraham. And this is a family of faith. And Jacob is a present day Israel. Jacob talked about the people of God. Jacob talked about the church. Now the church, for instance, and our nations are going through turbulence. We are going through the, the giving of birth of dead children. We are going through our business debts, our health, our spiritual life. Death is along the line. But now hear what Rachel said. Rachel said the child will be called Benoni. And Jacob said, I disagree with you, my beloved wife. I love you so much, but I will not speak evil. I will not, I will not allow my pain to pronounce my destiny. I will not allow my disappointment to shape my thoughts, my desires. And that's what is going on in so many lives. So many of us, even as I'm preaching, I've been through a lot in life, gone through. Well, I, if I tell you my stories, you will not believe I'm going to sit here as Bishop in my son. But what is the secret? Secret is never align the thing that you go through to, to stop the, th the place that you are going to. That's why I'm speaking on how you can change the name of your problem. Change the name of your situation. Change the name of what you are going through. Don't call it the way the doctor calls it. When you feel your breast in the morning, and when you feel your chest in the morning, when you feel your ribs in the morning, and you feel a lump, you feel a small lump, don't give it a name. Don't call it cancer. Don't call it uh, diabetes. We must learn to invent new and positive names. We must christen our situation with the best optimistic names, we must speak positively. We must speak in faith. We must learn to say something that will give it a new name. I remember, let me give you some instance. When I, when I was about to get married, people said, this one, his, his marriage is not going to succeed. I heard it. Some people told me, some came by the... Uh, by the that the air people spoke to my ears. Some spoke. Some of my friends came. They said, "You're not going to have a successful marriage." I said, "I'm going to have a successful marriage." Whatever way their criteria, I don't know. But by the grace of God, I'm 30 years in marriage today. Why? Not because I'm the best husband, but because when they said he will fail in marriage, I said I shall not fail. When they said you will die, come on, you say I shall not die. When they say you'll be a mediocre in a non titty, you will say, No, I'll be a star and a hero. Now, this is what I'm teaching you today. Your enemies don't have too much power. 
the only power they have is that when they speak, they just need you to say amen. They just need you to concord. They just need to frighten you and intimidate you to the point of you agreeing and synchronizing your thoughts and statements with theirs. As long as you don't agree, it will not come to pass because can two work together except they be agreed. So if you don't work together with your enemy to destroy your destiny, your destiny is not going to be destroyed. It will rather be catapulted. It will rather be promoted. So you are a product of what you say, not necessarily a product of what other people say. Other people may say all kinds of things about you. People may speak. Your doctors may speak. But sometimes we just need you to speak. I remember the man in, in John chapter 9. You know, he was a blind man. And, and, the, and the parents said, we don't know if he was blind. And the neighbor said, I think he's the one that was blind. And the Pharisee said, this man, are you sure how was he, how was he healed? And the, something the parents said, they said something. They said, he is of age. Let him speak for himself. That's powerful. That's powerful. So no matter what my parents and neighbors and Pharisees and pastors say about me, no matter what enchanters and necromancers and witches and wizards say about me, it would take me to talk about me for me to become the who me want to become. So it doesn't really matter. You can say, oh, that's why you see some people, people say all kind of nonsense about them, but you watch them in the next five years, they are skyrocketing, they are zooming into the air. You wonder what's going on. People speak evil of people, the people are still rising. What is the secret? The secret is the message of today that you can change the name of your problem. So Jacob said, I'm not going to call my son, I'm not going to call him uh, Benoni, I'm going to call him Benjamin. I'm going to call him the son of my right hand. And if you look at the tribe of Benjamin, from that time henceforth, they were the leaders of war. The, 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 the great king Saul in the Old Testament came from the tribe of Benjamin. Is that not a fulfillment of the prophecy of, of his great-grandfather? Because you are a product of what you say you are. You are a product of your name. You are a product of your confession. I remember the Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. He said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. But he says, not, that's not all. He said, but with the mouth. But with the mouth. So my life is determined by two key spiritual apparatus. The heart and the mouth. And watch this. The heart and the mouth. Bible did not say the eyes and the ears. Watch it. I'm correcting you. Not the eyes and the ear. You will see a lot. You will hear a lot. But what you think and what you say is what will nail it. That's what will finalize it. In prayers, you learn to say, I am the head, I'm not the child. In your confession, you learn to say, I am not sick, I am healed. I am the blessed of the Lord. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. People, especially in Nigeria, just need to stop talking negative things about their pastors. So many people speak negative things about their pastors, speak negative things about the church, and funny enough, speak negative things about their parents, about the government, about their governors. I'm not scoring any governor high here. I don't know how the governors perform. I'm not a politician. But I wish people in different states can learn to stand by their president, stand by their governor, and tell him, no, this is not the way it should be done. This is the way it should be done. I notice that with, with, with absolute strong faith, a city is built. A nation is lifted. But when we begin to give pessimistic and give negative comments about everything, we become murmurers and not men of faith. A man of faith sees the Benjamin out of the Benoni. A man of faith sees the tomorrow, not the yesterday. A man of faith does not use his eyes and ears only. He uses heart and mouth. For with the heart, you believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, you confess unto salvation. To get saved, to get delivered, to get blessed. To get uplifted, you keep speaking positive. How is your pastor? He's great, sound, anointed. We love him. 
how is your governor? Powerful man, great man. We are looking forward to a better year. How is Nigeria? How is Ghana? How is United States of America? America, Trump is doing well. He's getting the right thing. God is going to help him. We are praying for him. How is your husband? My husband is safe and sound. He is good, kicking, strong man, handsome man, the king of our family. How is your wife? Wow, virtuous woman, lifted, glorious. She is damn beautiful. These are the things that will change your destiny. Not putting your head like this and complaining from the air you breathe to the food you eat. Sometimes you are cursing yourself by the things you say. Now this woman watches the child die and she knows that she herself may not make it. So she's ending it all. You know, that suicide spirit is not your portion. That spirit of ending all. Some people, they just get frustrated, disappointed, and they just want to scatter and shatter everything. You don't need to scatter and shatter everything. No matter how hopeless and useless is your situation, the word of God is a correcting flute. The word of God through the blood of Jesus can reset, can reset your thinking faculty, can reorder your steps. Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 6, Psalm 16 verse 6, he said, my lines have fallen to me in pleasant places and because of that I have gotten a goodly heritage. When you begin to change your confession, you will begin to see your lines falling in pleasant places. Now, I remember someone like Adam. When God created the whole world, you know what? I, I, love, I love what I'm going to say now. I love this. You don't miss this. God was doing something and he had an assistant called Adam who was doing something. What was God doing? Now, let's check it out. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. God was creating everything. Now watch this. This will shock you. God never called anything he created after he created Adam. God never gave name to anything he created. He, he allowed Adam to name them. To name them. So, so God will finish creating that a lion. As powerful as God is in creating a lion. Watch this. He will not give a name. So he comes in the evening and put the lion. He said, Adam. Adam will say, yes, sir. He said, what's that? Uh, Adam said, mm, lion. And God said, wow, from today, it's lion. What does the Bible say? Out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. To see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called them, whatsoever Adam named them, that was the name thereof. God, God said to Adam, give it a name. I'll do the creating. It, that, that same role that Adam played, you and I are going to play. God is going to allow you to go through situations of life, create some situation in your life, but God is going to wait and say, son, what do you call that? And you will say, I call it blessed moment. And then God is going to allow your enemies to persecute you and punch you. And God is going to say, uh-huh, am I so? How do you see that? And I'm going to say, Lord, this is the day the Lord has made that I will rejoice. And the Lord said, sure. I said, that's the name. And God is going to call somebody in town to gossip me and fight me and say, you're not going to make it, am I so? And God is going to come to me and say, uh-huh. Uh, how do you see that? I say, Lord, this is the time of my revival. This is the moment my ministry is growing. The Lord said, wow, that's a good boy. That's what God is doing. He does the creating. The devil does the fighting. You do the calling of names. If you want to say your, your husband is a fool, he shall be a fool unto you, God forbid. If you say your wife is an harlot, my brother, you are the husband of an harlot to a good husband of a wonderful harlot. It is the name Adam called that that animal shall bear. Every animal shall bear the name that Adam will call. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I saw something here in Mark chapter 5, verse 41. Mark chapter 5, verse 41. Two times in the scripture, Jesus made a dead person and called him a different name. In, in Mark 5, verse 41, and he saw a girl that was dead, and he did not call her dead girl. Jesus said to her, damsel, damsel, I said to you, rise up. How can, how can you, how can you, how can you call a, a, a young 
a dead girl young girl? Why would you call a dead girl young girl? And also, I found in the scripture again, Luke chapter 7, verse 14. Luke chapter 7, verse 14. They brought Jesus to raise up a, the, the son of a widow, the widow of Nain. And he went to the, and saw this guy dead, cottons on his, on his nose, cottons on his mouth, cottons on his ears, inside a coffin. You know what Jesus said? He said, young man, I say to thee, arise. And I said, how young is a dead man? This is what I would have said. I would have said, dead man, I say to you, arise. Jesus said, no, it's not a dead man. Young man, I say to you, arise. Same thing in John chapter 11, from verse 4 up to 44. That's a long read for you. Verse 4 to 44 of John 11. Lazarus died, and Jesus said, he's not dead. He's sleeping. And now notice that your mouth, is a final referee for what you are going through in the football of life. When the referee say it's a goal, my brother, even if it hit the post, it's a goal. Forget about now that they have invented uh, the, the special computer lining technology. My brother, those days, when we were in secondary school, when the referee say it's a goal, even if the ball didn't near the goal post, it's a goal. Your mouth is a referee for the final blow of the football of your life. Even if you play nonsense, if you say, I'm nonsense, congratulations, Mr. Nonsense, see you in the grave. But when you play this ball and you say, I'm great, I'm anointed, my parents don't have money, my husband don't have money, I don't even have food in the house, but I'm great. My children, you're going to be mighty people. My ministry, you're going to be great ministry. My members, you're all going to be great people. You speak to your members, you pick those of them sweeping the floor. You prophesy to them. You'll be commissioners. You'll be governors. And they'll begin to say amen. As they begin to say amen, in a few months, some of them begin to grow, become governors, become ministers and senators. By the word of your mouth, change the name of your problem. Gideon was hiding in Judges chapter 6 verse 12. Gideon was hiding. I love this. Watch what the angel called him. As, as Gideon was hiding, verse 11 and 12, he was hiding under the oak tree. Angel appeared in verse 12 and said, um, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Wow. <laughs> How can you call a man who is running away from the uh, Midianites a mighty man of valor? What kind of thing is this? Britain, this is not a lie. This is not a lie. A prophecy is not a lie. Learn to look at your situation and find a better name for it. Don't say, I'm dead. Don't say I'm down. Don't say I'm broke. Don't say I'm finished. Don't say I'm sick. Don't say I'm poor. No. Change the name of your problem. Change the name of your situation. Find a better name and call it. Look at, look at a man called Judas. He was, he's the one that, that, that sold out Jesus. Matthew 26, verse 50. Matthew 26, verse 50. Judas is the one that sold out Jesus. But do you know what Jesus called him? Jesus called him friend. He called him friend. He sold the king of kings, but was called friend. And I said, why would Jesus call a betrayer, a denier, friend? And the Lord said, when you call your enemy your friend, you incapacitate him. You demobilize him. Listen to me. Don't, even if people hate you, don't do like you know that they hate you. Pretend like you don't know they hate you. Smile with them, shake their hand. You're heaping coals of fire. On their head, they can never succeed in their plan against you. Now, so we need to change the names we call our children. We need to change the name we call our wives. We need to change the name. I'll give you one more in, in Genesis 28 verse 19. Genesis 28 verse 19, a place that was called Luz. Jacob changed it in prayer and call it Bethel. The Bible says, and he called the name of that place Bethel, whereas the former name that they used to call was Luz. Now hear me, a transformer is not a neighbor property. You are a transformer. I'm a transformer. When you can change ugly to beautiful, you can change nonentity to a model, you are a transformer. You and I from today, are going to be transformed in this wonderful morning deal. I'm going to come back and pray for you, but I want you to just enjoy this music. Don't go away because I'm coming back to pray for you. Africa! Let's celebrate Jesus! The God of
wonderful music that time out I'm gonna pray for you I don't know the name your doctor gave that sickness I don't know the name your father gave your wife or your mother-in-law gave you or your enemy gave you even your landlord people call people by the wrong name but today I know you've learned the secret of changing the name of your problem and changing the name of your situation I want to pray with you but before I pray I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ there is no hope for a man who is not born again. Except a man is born again, he cannot experience the kingdom of God. What we are talking now are the principles of the kingdom you can never experience if you have not come to the kingdom. I know you want to give your life to Jesus. Place your hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life and be my savior. I confess that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for me. Today I'm born again. Today I confess he's my master. He, sh he shed his blood for me. And he has written my name right now in the book of life. Have mercy on me, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, thank you for all my viewers, all those who are in this room with me. Spiritually, there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. I pray for you. I bless you and your children and your family. I welcome you to the family of God. I change the name of that situation. Doctor, call it cancer. I counsel it. Doctor, call it poverty, I counsel it. Your enemy call it evil, I counsel it. Every evil name you or your enemies have given to your problem, I command it to change. Jacob changed Benoni to Benjamin. I change your poverty to prosperity, your sickness to health. Be blessed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Say that amen very loud. God bless you. I believe that next morning, the coming June 6, 2020, uh, God willing, and if all things are equal, we are going to meet again. Somehow, I believe that something will happen for us to meet again. And I want you to know that the morning dew is every first Saturday month of the month, 6 a.m., just a time like this. I know that you've been so mightily blessed. Mark that date, and we are going to see again on the 6th of June, 2020. God bless you.